I always think about there's always so much more that that I can do to help and serve or help the situation. I never try to think about like, well, what can this person do or what can this person like? I think about what is my role? What can I do? What do I have control over to make the situation better or mm-hmm. or improve? Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Proud to Be LBUSD podcast. I'm your host, Anjali, and today we're here with Miss Nguyen, who's actually the principal of Cabrillo High School. Hi, how are you? Thank you for coming in t- and talking with me today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Anjali, for having so, me here. Of course, you're such a pleasure. Um, why don't you start off by introducing yourself? Well, I just want to say thank you for um, having me here because it's super special to have a Cabrillo student uh, no. interview uh, and, and just put Cabrillo on 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 the map. So <laughs> thank you for the opportunity, and I'm excited for just to spend time with you today. Um, so I am a first year principal at Cabrillo. Uh, it's definitely been my dream uh, to be in West Long Beach. I was born and raised in West Long Beach. I grew up um, in the neighborhood. I uh, I'm the youngest of uh, nine nine children to two. <sighs> Vietnamese immigrants. Uh, my parents fled the war in 75, and then they made Long Beach their home. Uh, and so all of my siblings and I, we all went to Garfield Elementary, uh, mm. different middle schools. Uh, we were, uh, at the time, my brother decided to go to Poly, and then we all went there just because of uh, that. At the, at the time before Cabrillo was built, that was our uh, neighborhood school. Uh, and so I am just, I can't believe, uh, I think I, I walk around Cabrillo and like I'm in awe that like, is this real? Like, am I really the principal of, of the school? <laughs> uh, just because the West Long Beach community is so, so important to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so just the opportunity to um, serve a community that raised me uh, has been really been a, a dream come true. Oh my god! And I see that when you're like out there in school campuses, and the fact that you even took chance and the opportunity to be like, oh, you know what? I am actually going to talk to one of my career students. I felt like it was such an honor for myself um, to just be able to have you here and actually get to talk to you because I feel like it's important. So like students aren't so scared to like mm-hmm. kind of come up to the administration and try to have a relationship with mm-hmm. them because I feel like having that close relationship or at least a close bond with with some of you guys is really important because I think that you guys really truly make or break a space. Like if you guys provide that safe space, that equitable space that we're all looking mm-hmm. for, I think that that's what makes students more inclined to just want to go to school, to actually want to be a part of that community that you were just talking about growing up. And you did say that Cabrillo was one of your dream schools that you wanted to be your principal at. Like, why is that? Like, how is, how, like, I know you touched a little bit on it, but <laughs> uh, like, if you don't mind explaining. Sure, sure, sure. But first off, um, thank you for acknowledging that, like, definitely student relationships are at the core of, of mm-hmm. the why of, of what I do. Uh, and so... Now, I want all of our students to feel feel like they can come to me um, for for anything where I think sometimes it's like the adult staff hierarchy where right. like, I, yes. when we're talking about um, systemic issues and mm-hmm. um, elevating student voice and we're talking about equity work. Like we really have to shift that where it's right. like I'm talking to you as a human being yeah. and whether it's like this, the status of like your role or whatnot, all of that doesn't matter because I, I'm here, I'm here to serve you and I'm here because it's, it's a relationship, it's, it's a family uh, yeah. that, that we want to just come together um, and, and support each other. So uh, going back to your uh, <laughs> questions, no. uh, so where there's a, there's, there's a lot in that. Okay. Um, so why, why Cabrillo? So out of the six comprehensive high schools, um, if you grew up in Long Beach, um, Cabrillo is, is, was created in, in 1995 and it used to be West Long Beach High School originally. And if you know Long Beach, uh, sometimes uh, our narrative of who we are as Cabrillo uh, outside of Cabrillo is not very positive. And I'll, and I'll be frank right. with that. When you grow up in Long Beach, you, you hear that. And that like really saddens me when we talk about equity work. Uh, I de- de- deliberately wanted to be at Cabrillo because when we're talking about students or communities that are at the margin that are not represented, 
who don't have a voice and agency, it's West Long Beach and our, our school. Uh, and so when we talk about changes, like where is the highest need? This is why we center black students, right? This is why we center multilingual students, our students with special needs. Like who is it at the furthest on the margins that we come and serve and really change that? So mm -hmm. uh, it was really a decision on like, where do I want to be? I want to be at a community that raised me and I want to be at uh, Cabrillo. So that's kind of where my passion lies when I became, became an educator. Um, story time, I guess, but in yeah. high school, uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew that I wanted to work with people. Uh, okay. I was really involved in CCEJ, which is uh, used to be in the National Conference for Equality and Justice, different name now with the Human Relations Camp. And when I was as a student at Poly, I was also a counselor um, for Poly North, mm -hmm. where the camp started because of racial tensions uh, in the 70s, and it's really about humanity, learning about each other, learning about um, stereotypes, racism, and unpacking all of that to figure out like how do we treat each other as human beings and, and, and get along. So I just knew that in my work that I wanted to work with people. So originally, I actually wanted to become a counselor. And oh, okay. I talked to my high school counselor, Debbie Hughes, at the time about that, and she had recommended, hey, if you want to... Think about becoming a counselor, maybe get into education, become a teacher first. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was like, okay, I'll consider, I'll consider that. Uh, and so it was really not until I went to college uh, at UCLA when I took uh, a race class and gender inequality class. Uh, Professor Tyrone Howard at UCLA. Not a lot of back then. There's more now, but wasn't a lot of black professors back then when I went to school. At the same time, we learned about the broken system uh, that have that have been in existence in 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 the united states and and the world for a really long time and right. so uh, when i took that class it just opened my eyes because i felt like i lived in the bubble um when i with my k-12 education grateful for all my mentors and whatnot but it really stemmed my passion to okay i need to get into education and i want to be where i can be most impactful and that at the beginning was uh, becoming a teacher um and so I decided I became a sociology major mm -hmm. and an education uh, minor. Um, I ended up loving statistics and tutoring in college. And then and so then I decided to become a math teacher. So I started first as a math teacher at Avalon Schools. Mm -hmm. uh, cannot believe it, but they gave me a job at 21 years old to teach wow. in the classroom. Uh, so I was at Avalon for uh, my first two years uh, teaching. Okay. And then I went to Jordan High School uh, and was also a math teacher, also badminton coach uh, there. Wow. Uh, so funny story, my principal um, at Jordan used to be my principal in high school, Sean Ashley. So he knew I was very active, sort of like you, Anjali, in school, <laughs> in ASB, in sports, in extracurricular, in link crew. So literally everything that I did in high school, mm -hmm. Sean was like, hey, Doc, I think you can do this as a teacher, do this, do this. And so I, I had a lot of different roles outside um, when I was a teacher at Jordan, which okay. I loved. Uh, because like I got to like do high school kind of again, but yeah, also but like a, as a teacher's perspective, right? Teacher's perspective. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Um, and then an opportunity came up uh, where the prior activities director at Poly mm -hmm. had retired, and she had been a mentor of mine for a really long time. And she had actually said, "Hey, Nock, uh, when I retire, you're gonna you're gonna take over my job." Like, what are Terry? <laughs> like, all jokes aside. And then you're like, oh, wait. And so then she retired. Yeah. And then it happened. And so uh, I was blessed with the opportunity to become the activities director uh, at Poly. So I was very involved in ASB and leadership when I was already in high school. So also another uh, dream come true to really dive into uh, school spirit, the school culture and climate, um, develop meaningful activities and experience like you think about the things that students remember in high school, they remember going to camp or dances or a special event. Um, or like the, the carnivals or like the carnival, the carnivals, or performing some... on stage, doing mm -hmm. something that's like out there, out there mm -hmm. or you being on this podcast <laughs> or leading professional development for a student, uh, for our teachers. Like those are those moments that are powerful that like 
become in our core memory. Uh, and so I was blessed for the opportunity to be a key role person to do that for, um, for the high school students back then. And so I really had no intention to get into administration. <laughs> um, but at my third year, uh, my principal at the time, Dan Prince, had kind of tapped me in the shoulder. They're like, hey, you should get into admin and get into leadership. And I've always been at the core, like understand that leadership is important. And so okay. that's always been at the forefront. And so folks have always tapped me on the shoulder for different roles. And so I'm like grateful for that, where mm -hmm. I think God has really blessed me to be in the right moments, in the right place at the right time. And so I truly believe that I'm meant to be where I'm, I'm supposed to be. Uh, and so I've been grateful that folks and mentors have tapped me to sort of kind of guide me to kind of the tra trajectory and where, where I'm at. So it was really Diane Prince that introduced me to the our um, leadership pipeline that we have in our district. Mm -hmm. That'd be interested in getting into administration. You, um, uh, it's great because there's a mentor that you you get in the program, you apply for the program, and then you're paired up with a mentor, kind of guide you through being an assistant principal and principal. Uh, there is a step after principal. If you want to aspire to being a district folks, um, more more leadership in our district. But I like love what I do, so I yeah. don't see. <laughs> I don't see. You know, I don't see. I think some folks think that administrators just want to step up on the ladder. It's like, mm -hmm. you're meant to be exactly where you are. And at the core of who I am is like, I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve our students, first and foremost, and serve our community. Oh, my God. I know literally what my question was going to be, like, what made you, like, kind of go into it? You already answered that. And I was like, oh, okay, I can kind of <laughs> sit back here. But I do agree, like, I see you doing more than I kind of have ever seen Cabrillo. Like, I've been at Cabrillo all four years of high school. Freshman year was COVID. Sophomore year, um, I would say it's nice to see the change in atmosphere that admin like that Cabrillo has had. Because even, like what you said with Cabrillo's image, even in my um, middle school, like, when people would ask, like, oh, like, where do you want to go? They'd be like, oh, like, I want to go to Wilson. I want to go to Poly. Oh, I want to go to Cabrillo. Oh, you mean Kabubu? Like, mm. it was, it was, I can agree, like, I definitely even got the bad rep of how, like, Cabrillo used to be as a high school. And now seeing it change positively, and I've seen it for myself, and I'm pretty sure other students have seen it too, where it's like, you're out there, like, you're directing traffic in the morning. You're actually, like, talking and engaging with kids, not only just yourself, but as well as some of the other amazing admin that we've had this year. I'm like, where were you guys my freshman mm -hmm. year? Where were you guys? Because I feel like the atmosphere has definitely have, like, it's changed so much. And I'm so very grateful that you love to do what you do because you could tell like when somebody's very passionate about something, it just shows on their face and it shows on their work. And you're definitely one of those pers like one of those people that you can definitely see that you love your job and you love what you do. And that brings me so much joy. And I'm pretty sure like other like students can agree with that, too. Well, it's also the job is a lot easy when we have amazing students. Um, and one of the things where like. It's easy to do the job when there's so many people that are rooting for you, that care about you, that want the best for our school and our community. And I feel like for Cabrillo specifically, there already has been such great, amazing things that have been happening at Cabrillo, mm -hmm. including your freshman, sophomore, junior year. But this, the narrative or the communication about all the great things just hasn't been out there. And so right. one of the reasons why I'm so active on social media yes, is that I truly believe that we, like we're the authors of our own stories and our own, own narratives. And so you as a senior at Cabrillo, you're able to author and to narrate and create this story of Cabrillo and who you are as a Cabrillo senior and future alumni like that's right. such a powerful thing where now's the time to reshift that narrative and so we're at a pivotal time where you know Cabrillo has only been here for about 30 years almost 30 years so mm -hmm. we're very new so what is the new Cabrillo look like what does the vision 2035 Cabrillo look like and right. we have a pivotal time to really 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 create that and so um, I'm glad and grateful for the opportunity just to share and highlight some of those things uh, with you. Right. And you did kind of talk about it and kind of leading me into my next question. 
what are some personal goals for Carrillo and what are some personal goals that you have for yourself as a principal? Some goals for Cabrillo. Um, I think my mar larger goal within the community is really um, the school culture com component, which is increasing students' sense of belonging and value um, at Cabrillo. So with the Pulse Survey or the Core Survey coming up, that measures students' sense of identity, agency, and belonging. And we're really looking at, like, for all of our Cabrillo students, we have about 1,700 students. Does mm -hmm. every single student feel like Cabrillo is home to them like that's that's a hard question to answer for 1700 students I think it's easy for Anjali where we see you and it may be easy for me because they see me and I'm involved I'm involved I'm doing all these things right for our students that are really at the margins uh, and I know your work and your passion for our multilingual learners like yes how are we serving our multilingual learners mm -hmm. and are we how, how are we listening to their voice and serving them when we have um, when we have 1700 students and so for some of our teachers it's hard when you're when you're uh, when you have a large class right and you have to do all of these things uh, and we're asking our teachers and our staff to build relationships because at the core of it when you get to know a student um, they're being they feel comfortable enough to share their true self to you, then you have a better perspective of, okay, well, Anjali likes this or she does this and I can connect this to her. I can build that relationship and help support her uh, because at the end of the day, it's trust first and foremost. So uh, we had the opportunity for our uh, students to lead professional development, Anjali you being one of them, kicking off our first one. Right. Um, being able for, where it was amazing for our teachers to see our high school students be be the teacher and the student be the learner. Like, how cool is that? That was that was pretty cool. Like being up there, it was like it was funny because even Kara has said, "See, now I get to treat them like they get to treat us." And one of the biggest takeaways for me bringing there it's the way how those. Um, teachers feel with us teaching them is like how we feel when they're teaching their class mm. like do these teachers make us feel comfortable and safe and like are we actually happy to be here mm. versus the other side of those like that weren't and they didn't really want to be there and i'm like for the teachers who don't like that's how we feel being in your classroom like it kind of sucks but it was a pretty amazing opportunity to be able to kind of take charge and kind of step up and see what it's like being again in a different leadership position because there's so many types but i feel like each time you do it it's a different learning experience you learn something new and i personally really enjoyed it mm. i had a lot of fun i think that i think the teachers did benefit from it of course because they're also getting to know us and how we feel and we're getting to express ourselves and we had that space like i said that i feel like it's so important that relationships have to be like it's an it's an everyday thing you know and how are you building how are you keeping that relationship like within the community like how are you making sure you're valuing what you're gonna say and actually doing it because saying one thing is one thing and then doing another it speaks louder than what you're talking about mm -hmm. you know and I feel like for you for yourself I think you're just not like all talk you're actually like doing it like you're improving i would say cabrillo's image through your love and passion for like i would say equity hmm. yeah so it was interesting where you're saying about like kind of the teacher student reversed role mm -hmm. um where like we're in 2024 now 2024 where yeah our our students should be um we should be tapping into our students who have so much assets and so much knowledge to for us to learn, right? Like it shouldn't just be a one, oh, here's a professional development one day, three day training that our, our students are leading, but on the constant day to day where you're talking about this equity work, it's every single day we should be tapping into our students and asking them questions and receiving feedback on how, how can I be a better teacher? How can I be a better principal to better serve you, right? Mm -hmm. Like that should always be an ongoing thing because we're, as teachers and educators, we are practicing that we're lifelong learners and that we're not the ones that are all knowing. Like we have, we <laughs> make mistakes all the time. We don't know. Um, and so how do we, like it's, it's having to be vulnerable and say like, 
hey, forget all the roles, the hierarchy, like that's what unpacking this equity stuff is. Right. Where, and all that is socially constructed anyway, right? So I would hope to see that in the future, we do have more uh, student-led professional development, especially on centering, centering uh, relationships. But another thought I had where some of the other students were sharing that after they uh, did the presentation, they felt like a celebrity on campus. <laughs> and everywhere they walked, they're like, oh, you know, the staff and the teacher's like, hey, good job, good job. Like, you it was so great. It was really wholesome. I was like, oh, like this teacher, I don't know, but they're still congratulating mm. me because I know that they were paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, it's, and we'll share a little bit where we received positive feedback from uh, the teachers regarding the first and second training. We have our third one coming up. And so super well received. We're super proud of our students because, I mean, do you imagine like, I'm trying to step in your shoes as a high school student, like you're leading PD training for all of your teachers mm -hmm. that you may or may not have had. Uh, and so that's a very powerful, powerful thing that I would hope becomes more of the norm uh, yes. when, when we talk about this equity work. I think I completely agree with you. I feel like deconstructing, because I've even talked about it. I've even talked about it at a board meeting, how it's usually students have to learn from teachers, but it's such a social construct that it's mm -hmm. it needs to be broken down. Like, we're human. At the end of the day, we're people. You're a person. I'm a person. Why can't I just talk to you one? Like, one, you know, like, I don't get why there's this sense of superiority, mm -hmm. like, within some societies and that's how it's kind of always been you know and I really would love to see that kind of like hey like you're a person I'm a person let's have a conversation yeah. like how we are right now yeah so it's interesting because when like I step into a space um I have to think about all these social constructs where like if if you you and I were in my office, so I know we're in this podcast place right now <laughs> but you're in my office right and we were having a meeting I have to think like okay I'm coming into this space who has the like socially who has the power like I'm the principal so I need to I need to think about that where how do I m make sure that you feel comfortable because there's that positionality aspect but then I also know that okay I'm the principal but I also represent the school I represent teachers educators I represent the system but I also if I represent the system I also represent a broken system who has constantly harmed so many people Right. So I come into a space and I like and I think about that, like, OK, I'm coming into this space and I, as a principal, institutionally represent harm. And so I have to like, OK, I need to know that. And so the other person that I'm talking to, whether they're mad, they're upset. Um, I also represent the harm because I represent the district. I represent the system. So coming into that space. Um, how do I try to build trust and rapport and know that I'm like really listening and trying to empathize with the individual to really get to core of it? But that's not always easy. And yeah. so when folks are mad right off the bat, when I have meetings and things like it's OK, like I get that, like you may be upset, but I, I represent all that. And so understanding the dynamics of in the room, uh, um, either psychology or socially, like helps me kind of just come to a space and enter a space better with the knowledge of like, okay, I'm in the room, I'm with this positionality. I don't want this positionality, this feeling for other folks, but I know it just it just exists. Uh, so it's hard sometimes because I know where my heart is uh, and sometimes folks who don't know me may come jump, jump to conclusions about my way of being or who I am or by what I look or that I look young, that I'm Asian, that I'm female, like all of these things, yeah. right? Like all of my identities come to a space and that that comes into every space that I enter, but I'm mindful of the other individual and whatever their identities are, are coming to play uh, when we have a conversation or we're trying to problem solve or, or, or do something together. Wow. And how do you kind of develop your sense of like leadership style? Because I'm hearing that you're very mindful of relationships. So I'm like, what what kind of led you to realize that relationships was were important, especially becoming an educator? Hmm. It was interesting. Um, I knew that I've always wanted to work with people right. at a young age. Uh, and even when I was the activities director, I went to a CATA conference and 
I remember doing a, uh, a presentation to my ASB students of like, what are three things that are most important? And I, and I said, number one, relationships are important. Leadership is important. And number three, um, practice is, is important. And those three. And so relationships have always been at the core because I'm grateful for the relationships that I have with my family, my friends, my mentors, my students, my community. Like that was makes me human, right? Like yeah. we don't have any relationships. Like what is what is the point of 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 our being? I think God really God really created us to be in community with one another. So that has always been a core of who I am in terms of my leadership style. I don't know. Have you taken the Myers Briggs test? Uh, is it that personality test? The personality I test. I got the the teacher. I'm. Oh, I'm okay. I, I don't know the the letters, but I know that I'm a teacher. You're probably there's a every letter is different. E is extrovert or introvert. Oh, I definitely start with an E. I e. uh, definitely <laughs> start with an E. So I'm an ENFJ. Uh, when I take and and there's a bunch of personality tests. Out yeah, there. I, I've done it for fun. Uh, and we do it for fun, but it's also a learning. Um, um, similar leaders that have the same personality types are. Uh, Barack Obama, Oprah, uh, Maya Angelou. Um, there's ch- like charisma, empathy. Empathy is huge in 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 my leadership, mm-hmm. which could also be um, a downfall. Where like somebody comes to me and I'm listening, and there's harm being shared. I'm like it's definitely internalized. Like it, I definitely bear that, and and knowing that like you know I'm I'm the principal. I'm just trying to. Th- think about like solutions but sometimes it's like it's not I can't solve everybody's problems or solution uh and so sometimes that is heavy just because of my 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 empathy that you're wanting to help wanting yeah my wanting my wanting my wanting to help um but also going back to my faith of like I know that God is in control and so there's some things that I have control over and there's some things that God God you you take you take the lead you know (laughs) you got it you can do it yes but by definitely my leadership style um I always truly believe leading by example uh so anything that I would ask you to do I would I would do myself and so a, a lot of it is modeling that behavior so if even like say for example, um, parents are coming in for the first time to open house back to school night. I'm I'm greeting, I'm modeling, saying hello, making eye contact, being positive because that's what I want my other staff members to model and to also emulate and to also do. So it's those little things that that I that I always consider. Um, I've also also been known to be they call me extra. So <laughs> you can never be too extra. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm extra, and I really truly believe if you want extra results, then you have to be extra. So part of my personality is just being, being, being extra. But like I always think about, there's always so much more that that I can do to help and serve or help the situation. I never try to think about like, well, what can this person do? Or what can this person, like, I think about what is my role? What can I do? What do I have control over to make the situation better or Mm -hmm. or improve? And I think the way that you're kind of telling me how when you approach a room, like to know that you're right, like maybe when I'm coming in and doing a class presentation, I don't know how the teachers react and react. I don't know if they're gonna come with me with that mindset of, Maybe they're angry. Maybe they're not having a good day. Maybe they're like, they don't give me the time of day. Like maybe, you know, just to say. So hearing like your perspective of how you enter and you approach a situation, especially when like you're with the student or like you're with somebody else, like I think that's pretty, pretty amazing because I don't think I've ever heard anybody actually share like how they come into a space. Like mm-hmm. usually when I come into a space, I come in with a clear like calmness of like open mind that I'm like open for anything and if debatable topics come up then they come up and we talk about them so I think that that's pretty cool and I know this is going to be a very hard question but what would you say is one of your favorite things about like being a principal despite like I know that you have such a like positive impact and like how you said yourself was a student you got tapped by mentors I hope you know that you're also being a mentor for like even myself and even other students that we kind of look up and we're like wow like this is our principal like this is actually like pretty cool Hmm. what is my favorite thing I think you ask any staff member what's their favorite uh, thing about their job Mm -hmm. is our students like (laughs) yeah and it's 
probably the most uh, common answer, which is the most truth truthful thing. Like mm -hmm. we, as educators, got into education to serve our to to work with our students. I don't know of any teacher, and there's some right that that this is a job per se, but like. Hey, there's a pat. There's a reason why you become a teacher because your job uh, is gives you meaning and and value because you know that what you do uh, makes makes an impact. So my favorite job is definitely uh, the students. One of the things that has been um, surprising to me is how maybe quickly relationships have actually formed for me at Cabrillo because I just didn't anticipate it. Um, but I also think it's like one, the visibility, cause I'm so, uh, at the events mm -hmm. and after school and, yeah. um, I'm, you're out there supporting, I'm supporting and, and I love to do those things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and also one of the, one of the things that surprised me was actually my social media presence, uh, because there's, uh, the beginning, especially at the beginning of school year where I didn't really know that many students. Um, some students started like making comments on like positive comments okay. and things. Yeah, positive comments. On 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 the post or DMing me. Um and and some of it like was like joking. Uh I had this kid <laughs> call out Miracle. Miracle mm -hmm. um originally um put on my comments life is Roblox. And so really the first week of school he would come by and didn't know who he was originally and he would go, Life is and then I'll say Roblox. <laughs> and so oh. we have this thing where like, even those little silly things where I think my social media presence allows me to be accessible and visible. And also very much reliable, I would say that too. Because even when I have a question, I'm like, okay, I could just talk to my principal. Or like, even when I when I post something that I need to get out there, I know I can tag you because I know you're gonna repost and share it. Yeah, yeah. And so that's something that is probably newer in terms of, the social media, I guess, is not new. But for some folks, the social media piece is new. Mm -hmm. But having that account to uh, make myself uh, accessible, which I don't, I mean, there's also the balance between um, the work-life balance, right? Yes. Like, I don't mind the social media. I don't mind creating the content and things. But they asked for, like, an administrator to do that because we, we have a whole social media team, right? Mm -hmm. Like, right. those are, you're part of the social media. Like, it's a lot of work. Uh, but that's something that I know is a value and important to students, to our staff too, and even our families, because I know that it's important. That's something extra uh, that I'm going to spend some time to do, um, just because I know that it's 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 valuable. Yeah, and I feel like again, you're very like I think you're very in tune with your emotions, which is very great because I feel like that's that sense of like you being so genuine and being able to have an open conversation and you're also willing to listen to students. I think that's um, what's made you feel like, hey, like we can come up to you. And I think that's also why you're so popular because ever since we heard like, oh yeah, Miss Nguyen's coming to Cabrillo or like we were asking who's our principal like for this year, like your name spread pretty quickly and nobody had anything bad to say about you like it was all good things we were all excited mm. to see this new change and like like i said that administration and i think that we're, we're slowly we're, we're 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 building there thanks for sharing that on the on the student perspective mm -hmm. uh it's actually been really cool to one of the other surprising things um my brother tuan win is also uh an administrator he's an assistant principal at bancroft right. But he used to be the activities director at Cabrillo. So my like <laughs> memories of Cabrillo has been when visiting him as activities director. Mm -hmm. And so what has surprised me is how quickly my relationships have formed also with staff. Because folks that uh, has worked with my brother, first thing they say to me is like, hey, I love working with Tuan. I love working with your brother. It's cute. One of the staff members for Christmas um, gave me a card and put uh, Principal Wynn little little twan <laughs> like oh, and, and I don't, yeah it's cute uh and so there's already like an instant like familial family connection mm -hmm. that i feel so like grateful for so i just know at the core i am a relationships person but just how quickly those relationships formed was was definitely of, of surprise to me like it's only january we're halfway through the school school year oh my god you're graduating in a few months oh my god Angeline. but yeah i feel like it is very nice to see that you're very like relationship based. What is some advice you would give for like general students or like maybe people who want to get into an education career? Like what's some advice for those? Hmm. 
education has definitely morphed uh, over over the years. Mm -hmm. um, I think advice for students who are interested in pursuing um, is definitely mentorship. Like have somebody who you know are in the field that you look up to who can guide you, uh, ask questions. And there are so many folks uh, who are in the professional field who just want to give back and who want to be a mentor to a mentee. And so, and I, even at my age, still have mentors, right? Uh, and and I have mentees at the same time. So like, it's just an on, ongoing, continuous um, kind of core core uh, relationship. So my advice is to continue to network and 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 build those relationships and have those mentorships. Uh, education isn't easy, um, but it's such a rewarding, rewarding, rewarding job, and I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. Oh, so good to hear and I want to thank you so much again for coming on here and talking to us and letting me get to pick your brain of actually getting to know who you are as a person I know I've talked to you I've had conversations with you I of course interacted with you but I feel like this just brings a, like a different sense of like oh okay now I can say like I know you mm -hmm. and it makes me feel really good to know that we're in good hands and for like like you said we're graduating so for everybody else like who's going to Cabrillo or who's thinking about Cabrillo I just want you want you guys to like know that we're op we're here and we're like we're opening you we will welcome you with open arms I feel like so thank you so much for being here today yeah thank, thank you so much for the opportunity because uh, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you so I appreciate you and know that whatever you do when when I watch you on social media or you do your things that you represent Cabrillo and you make all of us so proud. So mm. keep doing you. See ya.